Thank you, dear Father. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Come tabernacle with your people, dear Father. Come sit on your throne. Come rule. Come take over lives here today. Come, come redirect steps here today, dear Lord. We trust you're going to do something awesome in our midst. We're trusting that lives are going to be promoted here today. Things are going to change. Hopes that have been from the past are going to be fulfilled, dear Father. You do a new thing. All eyes will see it because your mouth has spoken it. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to give you a memory verse. Something you're going to remember is in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. You know, when the writer of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, whenever he's speaking, he speaks in parallels. He makes a statement and then he remake that statement so that when you study the two, you will understand what he's saying. He will say it. When initially, when you look at the two statements that the writer of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes will put together, initially you would think they are not in tandem. But watch closely. He's saying the same thing. We have such a case here. He said, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. This is the third time my master and my king will enable me to preach from this verse. And I've come to notice that it means that he's speaking to somebody. He's speaking hope to somebody. He's speaking comfort to somebody. But at the same time, he could be speaking a warning to somebody. Better is what? The end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Better. Better is a word that we use when we compare two things. Better is the end than the beginning. The first time I preached from this message, from this uh, scripture, was at a wedding. At a wedding, it was a wedding. I had all of my wedding messages prepared I was there. You know, at a wedding, you preach about wedding. So, and I, I'm becoming a specialist in preaching in weddings. I can preach it 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Why do I make my wedding messages short? Because I know the bride and the groom are in a hurry. They don't want a pastor to waste their time. They just want to get married and get out. But that day, all my wedding message changed. I look around, find clothing. Cows died in their plenty. There was food and food and food to waste. It was a very glamorous occasion. There were people to jest and make us laugh. There was food everywhere for all to eat. There was drinks in abundance. Everything was there. And the Lord was still telling me, better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. I told my wife who was sitting next to me, I said, for one reason or the other, I don't feel happy. She said, why? She said, I'm here. My master is here, but he's not here rejoicing. I can feel his presence, yes, but instead of, you know, when the Lord is happy, you know, anybody know that? When whatever we are doing is bringing joy to his heart, his presence comes down. And in his presence, there is what? There is fullness of joy. But that day, people were dancing. The music was good. The food was excellent. And yet, there was something in my heart. Again, I told my wife, I said, something is amiss. She asked me what? I said, I don't know. It is one thing I can see. One thing you can see. One thing nobody can see. One thing only God can see. And it is not a right thing. And the Lord is telling me better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. 
How do I preach that as a wedding? So I went out and I thought it was a prayer to pray for them. And I prayed, Oh Lord, let the end of this marriage be better than its beginning. And everybody said, Amen. But then I got home and the Lord was trying to make me see that he didn't ask me to pray. That he was telling me to look around and look at the glamour of the beginning. Are you listening? Look at the glamour of the beginning and weigh it with the end. He made me realize that day that however we polish the beginning, it is the presence of God in the beginning that determines the end. Whatever he does not start, hmm, he does not engage in. And may God not leave you on your own. Amen. If he doesn't start it, he doesn't engage in it. When events started to happen, I want all the young people here to listen to me. When events started to unfold, we realized God was not at the beginning. So he was not at the end. I won't mention names because three people in this congregation know the people that this happened to. It became a childless marriage. One of the two couples dead. The second one is married. All within a space of time that you can count on the finger. And so, when I heard of the death of the woman, I went back to the Lord. I said, Lord, is this what you were saying? He said, yes. And that day, that day, I learned something practically that you all know, but which sometimes you may not acknowledge, that the Lord knows the end from the beginning. That's my first thing I'm teaching you. Put it deep in your, in the place where you keep very, very precious things, so that you will never, never forget it. What is the first spiritual principle I'm teaching this morning? That the Lord does what? He knows the end from the beginning. I started questioning him. You knew this was going to happen? He said, yes. Why didn't you avert it there, Lord? He said he was never invited. From the beginning. But it's a wedding in church. But God says he was not part of it. Then he caused me to start to hear things. Please, when you marry Moses, stand. Stand up. When you marry, start in God hmm? yes, so that you can end in God. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Do what? Start in God. I'm beginning to understand what he said. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do what? And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He knows the end from the beginning. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Anybody know why the Lord knows the ways of the righteous? Because the Lord is the architect of the ways of the righteous. He ordered it from the beginning. That's why the Lord ordered the steps of the righteous. Those are scriptures. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. Does the Bible not say there's a way that does what? That cement right. You may be seated. A way that what? Cement right. And when I think of there's a way that cement right unto a man, my heart goes to that wedding again. Believe me, I've been to weddings. But you know there are weddings where you see somebody walking around and say, call me for fish. Anybody ever been there before? She's there, beautiful girl wearing an apparel saying call me for what fish when you feel fish do what call her and if you try it you say yeah you want fish before you can say jack robinson good fish is appearing there's call me for fish there's call me for drinks call me for extra meat they have all this call me call me people walking around and when you call them the answer that's the kind of wedding i'm talking about and when you look around you say this is good but in the light of the end, 
I'm not rejoicing over the mistake of that wedding. But I want somebody here to hear my story and think succinctly. And believe that the Bible can never lie when it says better is what? Is the end of a thing than the beginning. So it means, my second spiritual principle, that the beginning may look right. I don't need to finish that. What did I say? The beginning may look right. So which means we are not supposed to choose by things that look right. If you're going to say, I'm going to make a choice because it looks right, may, there are so many, many things that look right at the beginning, but which ends in disaster. It may look right. That wedding looked right to me. I bet I was the only person that the Lord bought in that day. I was the only one that the Lord bought in. That was a situation wherein I couldn't do anything. But there have been situations where I could do something too. I remember too, I was in Oshogbo. A sister, a tongue-talking sister, maybe those who are about to get married will listen attentively because my examples are from what? Weddings. She came into my office and she said to me, Sir, I'm about to do something you will not like. I said, what? She said, I'm about to marry somebody you will call an unbeliever. I said, don't do it. Don't tell me the details, but don't do it. It is difficult enough being married to a believer. Any believer here say yes. Egbo? Esoto, Emma, Emma, Parofa, Wedjama, Yi. Being married to a believer is what? It's difficult enough. Your tongue-talking spiritual wife still give you hell occasionally. But then you go on. You go on because you are both having the same destination. If it is difficult sometimes being married to a believer, then it is impossible to be married to a non-believer. If you have at the back of your mind your eternal destiny in God's eternity, if you have that at the back of your mind, don't joke with who you marry. So I said to her, baby, don't do it. She said, sir, you don't know him. So I said, bring him, let me see him. And when the fine boy connection came into my office, he looked good. Pencil line French mustache. You know what I'm talking about? A guy who walks with a sword. He slithed into my office and the perfume did not leave 30 minutes after he left. You know this kind of guy? You ask him a question, he, he returns in answer as if his brain is better than that of Albert Einstein. Intelligent brother. Fantastic person. All his problem was, he was an unbeliever. Cool. Even I was impressed. But why I was not that impressed was because I know. Better is what? The end of a thing than the beginning of it. I also know that not all good looking beginnings have a good end. So when he left, I called my sister. I said, sister, I can see what you saw. The brother is sleazy. The brother is glamorous. The brother is good looking. And the brother has fasos. Because he came then in a, Mercedes, in, a, in a Volvo 760. Anybody know that Volvo? The Volvo that goes this way and the smile goes, huh? Uh-huh. That's what he came in. When he was going and the two of them left, I felt good. But you know what she did not know then? You want to know what she did not know? The brother was a homosexual. Jehovah knew. Jehovah knew. For nothing can be hidden from him. So when my God at a good looking beginning says no, please accept it is no. For he can see beyond the good looks of the beginning. He can see. His eyes are not shut. His hands are not shut. Nothing about him is limited. He is the great I am. A yay, a shah, a yay in Hebrew. The I am that I am. The name that men tremble to call. What can be hidden from him? That's your father. So when he says no, wise people have learned to say, God says no. And your friends will say, but it looks good 
And you will say, looks good really, but God said, no. But you're going to benefit, in spite of the benefit of the beginning, all the benefit of a beginning can be eaten up in one day of disaster. You there with me? Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. Are you listening? Are you still there with me? One day when I now heard, when the brother finally revealed his true nature, she couldn't come back to me. She has now seen the, the end that God was trying to avert. May you not get to the end before you learn. May you not get to the end before you learn. That is the negative part of it. But I've also seen people who got to an ugly beginning. Anybody ever seen that before? You get to the beginning and it looks like no journey can travel here. I have a word for you. God can ask you to start on a thorny path because he knows it's going to end on an express road. He can see the end of, from the beginning. Ah, too many stories like that. I remember a sister who said to me, Brother Wale, I know God is leading me into this marriage, but why me to this brother? And when you look at the brother, you will agree with her. You know these shirts, white shirts can tell when you are poor. A white shirt. It can reveal when you are poor. Moses is not poor. His white shirt is still okay. But when you wear a white shirt at the back here, oh dear, you know where this lapel joined together? They will be having problems. The clothes will not join. There will be this thin line that is faint. You know it? And so men now would knot their tie this way so as to cover this thing. It doesn't cover. All the shirts will be white, but that thin line will be brown because the shirt is gone. And the brother was there standing in front of me you know what, what, what brothers do when they are standing before pastors? They speak in tongues. When there is no money, they use tongue to cover. Brother, how are you? I'm good. Say they said top of Did you talk to God before? Yes, yes. The Lord asked me to go to her. And in your heart too, you know God is here. In your heart too, you agree, God is here. But then you are wondering, God, what is the evil that this young woman has done that will make you give her to this man? Because in roughness, is rough. In clothes, he's not well dressed. All he has is a degree. And the degree is not yet bringing him fasos. And you look at it and you can't see anything. And you wonder, will I give my daughter to this man? But you know God is saying yes. At such times, you close your eyes and you say, Daughter, go ahead. He said, Daddy, are you sure? Say, I'm sure. The Lord has spoken. On the wedding day as a father, I'm telling you what I know. As a father, you are watching and you are hoping you are not wrong. But then the grandchildren start to come. Beautiful, beautiful children, they start to come. You start to hear tiny, tiny stories. Not big things. You know, oftentimes God does not do big things. When you really want to lift a man up. A little here, a little there. A little business. Things are turning and things are turning. And today, they are in the USA. Wow. Are you, I, I actually plan to see them when, if I travel. And, and I... <laughs> they're good. But me, no me. I'm from Oyo. I never let them forget. I will still tell them the story when I see them. I will say, Shoron Tijonye. <laughs> and he you know if he's the last if, he, if, if I come back into the world I will still marry him <laughs> because now she can see what she can see the end better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof I'm telling you my third spiritual principle and please don't forget it why is the end better than the beginning listen to me because the end is the reason for the beginning now, if I stop there, my message is given. What did I say? Yes. The end is the reason for the beginning. Say that again. Yes. Say it again. Yes. 
In the light of the end, all your sufferings don't matter. <laughs> In the light of the end, all the challenges don't matter. I'm talking to somebody here. Where you are going to find yourself in 10 years, men will not believe you've ever suffered in your life. They won't know. They won't know. The transition from the beginning to the end can be troublesome. But if God is there, uh, 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 the end is going to be beautiful. The end is going to be beautiful. The end is not going to be your death. The end is going to be the beginning of beauty that man can never, never understand. Because I want to be clear on what I'm calling the end. The end is the fulfillment of the purpose of God for your life. Where you will begin to know why he has taken you on that journey. John Boyan said, two dates are important in the life of a man. You want to know the two dates? The day he is born and the day he knows why. I'll say it again. Two days, very important in the life of a man. The day the man is born, and the day he knows why. A lot of people come into the world, they never know why. They never know why. Do you know what it means? It means they never get to the end. At the end, you know why you are born. It will take a time for some people to understand that. It's when you get to the end that you know. So this is why the Lord brought me here. That is when everything will begin to have a meaning. When all the pains will become joy. And the challenges will become testimonies. And I'm speaking to somebody. That is the story of your life. Amen. I'm speaking to somebody. That is the story of your life. Amen. I can see everything turning around. Eh? Turn it around. Sing it if you believe it. Around, I can see everything. Turn it it's turning around. Turning around for my. I can see everything. Turning, turning, turning. Turning, turning, turning. Turning, turning, turning. turning for my, I still can see everything turning around, turning around for my, I still can see everything turning around, around, turning around, around for your good. Amen. It will turn around. You will have a testimony. You will be established in your high places. Amen. He has not brought you this far to fail you. Yes. Okay, one day, I, I wanted to go to Mount Olivet as a young boy. But then, my father didn't do what he was supposed to do, so I ended up in Anglican Commercial School. And in Anglican commercial school, they taught us how to type. Are you getting me? So I learned how to type. I didn't want to be a typist, and I'm not a typist. But I learned shorthand. Anybody had Pitman shorthand before? It was very good. A hundred words per minute, Pitman shorthand. I, I don't know if I can still recognize Pitmans. But in those days, I was quite good. And so we did that. And then I met the Lord. And I typed my book myself in four days because I have the speed. When I finished typing, Emmanuel would call me from London. I was in Leicester then. He would say, Brother Wally, can you quickly do uh, uh, the next chapter? And so I sit down there. There was in Kwakon. I go there. When we were learning, it is ASDF colon LKJ. You know it? Yes. Uh huh. I remember when I was learning, I was about 15, a, 14. A S D F colon L K J. And we were like that. But then when I was typing, everything went so fast. That day I cried. I said, Lord, so you knew. One day you were going to give me an idea. An idea, and you want me to type it. 
And so I don't need a secretary. I don't need anybody to help me do my typing. I can do it sometimes faster than any secretary you can give unto me. Because at my initial, he infused into me the ability to type. Because he knows he was going to need it in the end. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. For the end to be better. I know there are good women here who know how to cook. I hate iru when it is not in food. Hmm? And I don't like the bitter state of uh, bitter leaf. But now come, come, just help me add it together. Pepe, bitter leaf, egusi, iru, fish, okoroko. Mix it together by a good cook. What comes hot? As individual ingredients, they may not be good. But the combination is always excellent. That is what I said when I said I have a comforting word for somebody. You have taken the bitter. The bitter waters of Mara. You have tasted the sharp. Things might not have been good. But God is beginning to combine everything together. I'm giving you as a word of prophecy. If your heart can believe in it. The bitters of yesterday coming together with the sweet and the salty. Will produce a dish. That even you will be very happy for. God is doing something great. And forget the beginning of my message. Take the word I'm here to say to you. That when I'm done with you, says your God, you'll be glad you know me. Amen. He's going to take you to a height that will scorn your beginning. Amen. I heard of Rocky Fella. Anybody heard this story before? Do you know it was a shoe shy? <laughs> was a shoe will go somewhere and this mafia boys will come together and he will take his uh, you know in those days they don't, sh they don't do shoes the way you do it you put the shoe in your lap eh? you take a very long cloth and you do it this way hoo, hoo, hoo. so you get that later on he, uh, he employed many of the people he did shoes for later on because God brought about everything for his good I speak about the bitter peace you've taken yesterday. You will thank God for it someday. Amen. Can I say something else? Yes, One day you will thank the Lord for the bad people that came into your life. Amen. I need to say that one. I need to repeat it. The people who hurt you. The people who said evil things about you. The people who really, really did mad and bad things to you. One day you will say, thank you, dear father. Because everything they did to you that was bad will turn around for your good. Amen. I feel it. And I'm saying it with all the authority I feel within me. Now your life is a good one. Yes, sir. Your life is a good one. Amen. There is a wind that is blowing, carrying water for you. Amen. For you. And the cloud will gather. Initially, men will think it is dark. Then that dark cloud will begin to drop its content. Amen. And your land will never be barren again. Amen. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I've told you my third spiritual principle. Is that the reason, the reason for the beginning is what? Is the end. He said something. He said the thoughts that I have towards you are thoughts of good and not evil. To do what? To give you a hope and an expected end. When you get there, you'll be glad. And you'll get there very soon. Amen. Actually, some of you are speeding towards success. I said that on. You'll do what? Speeding towards success. You will grow. Amen. You will grow. Amen. Even I will be glad that I pastored you. I met a man. You know, his wife was very, very pregnant. You know, Ijokodo, that staircase. So the two of them, they pack their Volkswagen. And so, customary, the way I used to do, I would welcome every new person. They wouldn't know that I'm the pastor. So I went there and said, Ah, madam, can you climb? She said, Yes. So I pulled her hand. And I pulled her up. And when they got to the top, I ushered them into the church. She said later on that when she saw me preaching, she said, 
usher has preached in this church. Someone now said to her, no, no, he's not an usher. That's our senior pastor. And she said to me, that was why they decided to stay in church. They are not pastors in New Covenant Church. But I remember my first word to them. I said, what do you do? I said, I'm a lecturer. So I held his hand. I said, you're a junior lecturer today. It will give me pleasure to pastor the provost of the University of Ibadan. Uh, what do you call them? The VCRB of University of Ibadan. He laughed. He said, <laughs> Uh, pastor, because it looks so far. You know who I'm talking about, Peter. It looks so far. When he became what is first on the uh, clinical of the department, he became the HOD. I went to his office. I said, It will give me great pleasure to pastor the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan. Then he became dean of arts last year. When he became dean of art last year, I went again. He said, it will give me great pleasure. That time he didn't laugh. He said, I can't laugh anymore. It's obvious you know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I know that God starts big things from humble beginnings. Every big thing he has started has an humble beginning. So I'm not at all surprised when you start humbly. Just keep on trusting him. Just keep on working with him. Just keep on abiding in his presence. You're going to become great. And then you become greater. Amen. And then you become greater. Amen. Until all will hear about you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Something good has already happened to somebody. But I'm declaring that something better is still in stock. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Gave me great pleasure. When I parked there. <laughs> He told them, you know, you are as their protocol. So when I got there, they say, I said, I want to see the Dean of Arts. Do you have an appointment? I said, no. But well, tell him, who will I be Charles? It's as said. So when the guy hurried out, ah, Baba, HD, Uri Mikoshibai, yeah, Mode. Muatinri, I said, let just my loss of his CVC. Because we've spoken before and that's happened. And I'm saying to you, you'll be great. Amen. I'm saying to you, you'll be great. Amen. It's not a prayer. It's the way God works. Yes, he said the light of the righteous is like the first break of day. It shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until full noon. It's the way of God. It's the way he does things. He takes a David from where he's taking care of a little flock and he makes him a king. That's what God does. It takes people who are little in their own sight and it makes them great. I'm sure Peter Potoki will be great. I honestly, I'm just saying this. I'm sure. Why am I sure? It is the will of the Lord. You can put your name there. You will be great. You will work great. You will increase. Because I'm sure. Listen. You want to hear what I want to say? Stand. My brother. The you I can see now is not the end in the heart of God. Do you agree? I know you're big. I know you're doing well. I know your business. But that is not the end in the heart of God. The end is bigger. The end is brighter. The end is greater. Amen. It's more luscious. Amen. It's expanded. Amen. It's higher. Amen. And you get them. I'm sure. I can't see anybody here who is at their end. You're not there yet. You may even be old. You may be what? Age doesn't matter. If the end delays, then you're going to live long. Amen. Because you must get there. Yes, sir. Because he who has spoken does not lie. Woo! There's no shadow of turning in him. Yes, sir. He's the beginning of all things and the end of all things. Yes, sir. That's why we call him. You know when he came back in Revelation, I'm the Alpha. And, and then he what? And the Omega. Better is the Omega than the Alpha. Because listen to me, listen to me. Do you know the meaning of that? When Jesus himself came, was he not a baby? When they wanted to kill him, did he not run to Egypt? Yes, he was a baby, he couldn't defend himself. Let any demon try to kill my Lord now. <laughs> Let any demon try to touch him now. The Bible says in Revelation that when John the Beloved saw him, fire was coming from his eyes. A sword from his mouth. Who can touch the holiness of the king? 
Better is the omega than the alpha. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. Yes, Are you here with me? Yes, sir. I say you're going to wash great. Amen. Let me give it a little twist before we begin to conclude. Because I know somebody is thinking, what should I do? I give it a little twist. In this room right now are dreams that would have been great. But which people did not follow? Why? Because they look too humble. They can't see God in it. And from today, as I perceive in my heart, God will begin to drop ideas in the heart of men. They will look little. They will look minuscule. And sometimes you wonder, can this lead to anything? Please follow through. Please follow through. Please follow through. For it doesn't make mistakes. I was in Sango. Sango, our church there. And uh, <laughs> I was just preaching. You know, there is something that we call the hot wire message. I will explain it to you. Even you didn't know you were going to say it. You're just preaching and you come. I call it hot wire message. And the hot wire message came and I said, very soon somebody will give you money. It will be little. Very little. I said, go buy plastic with it and start to sell plastics. Even I felt foolish when I said so. Because plastic is a little I didn't know there was somebody there who listened. She said she was just going, and then somebody just called her to say, one money that has been clinical, they gave her the little, I've forgotten how little. She became the biggest plastic seller in Sango because God knew. She made a lot of money from it, though she left the New Covenant Church when too much money came. You know, too much, too much money can cause trouble. The humble woman that used to sit somewhere in church started to dictate to the pastor the kind of messages to preach. When money came. But we are the one who prophesied that the money was coming in the first place. May the money abide. May it just abide with her. We are not angry with her. May she do well. But honestly, she left. But when I told her, she was a poor woman. They gave her an inconsequential money. She said, Pastors have plastics. I'm telling you, because honestly, oh poor. But she didn't see me. She went, she bought the plastic, she started selling from small to big and big and big. She became a mighty business. Something like that is going to happen to somebody here. Amen. A little thing that the Lord is going to hide in your hand will become mighty. <laughs> it will be small when you start, but then it's going to grow and it's worse, stronger Amen. and it's greater Amen. until it becomes greatest. Amen. Are you there with me? So what do we do? You will notice in that scripture he ended by saying better is the what? No, the second part. The humble, the humble in spirit than the what? Huh? Than the proud in spirit. Now let's just do a bit of mathematics. The proud in spirit, therefore, link it to the first statement. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Now he's using the same word, better. Better is the humble in spirit. So put better to the better. It will now begin to stand that the humble in spirit will get to their spiritual end. But the proud in spirit may not get there. Can, can you see the mathematics, the way we link it? So everybody now in this room is saying, Lord, I don't want to be proud in spirit. Are you saying so? I don't want to be proud in spirit because I want to get to my end. The end that is in your heart, oh Lord. So I want to be humble in spirit. So don't let's use spiritual language. What is being humble in spirit? Hmm? What is being humble in spirit? My father will say, I bury or no. Cocaine shino. Come to me. People who ask, don't get lost. Listen. Do you know that only wise people ask questions. Have you noticed that? I've moved with people. I've moved with people. Those you think are wise are the ones who ask more questions. The foolish ones don't ask anything. 
I don't know why it is like that. Don't ask me to explain. But I want or there to No, you won't ask. Fools don't ask questions. Do you know why fools don't ask questions? Because they think they know. So which means the problem with the fool is pride. He doesn't ask. He does his own foolish calculation in his heart. He's going to be like that. He doesn't, he doesn't ask men. He doesn't ask friends. He doesn't ask God. No, I don't mind you're not asking men. You may not. But I do. I don't mind you're not asking friends. You may not. But I do. But please don't do it without asking God. <laughs> Said the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Can you now link it? The reason he doesn't ask God is because he doesn't believe God exists. Only what church you. But in church, if you're not careful, you have atheists that attend church. How do I define an atheist? An atheist is not somebody who does not believe in God. And it is somebody who lives as if there is no God. My definition. Because even Tai Solari, who said he was an atheist, named his son Baba Tunde. If you if Baba Tunde Ebolo Lord, they don't believe in no. If Baba Tunde, only Baba and Lord Tunde, in Bolo wa Lord Tunde, who the atheist alone. The man was not an atheist. Was a confused person. Are you listening to me? True atheists. They may go to church, they may go anywhere, but they live their life as if there's no God. That's why he said the fool says in his heart. In his heart. Which means what he's saying in his mouth may be different. He may say with his mouth, God is good, God is good, but in his heart, which is based on his heart, he lives as if God does not exist. The Bible refers to them as what? As proud in spirit. God sees, listen attentively, Son, whatever you do without asking God, God consider that you are proud. Every salient decision in your life that you take without asking God, He consider that you are proud. Stand. He said, I knock. I'll be at the door. But then, will he badge in? No. If anybody opened the door, what will he do? He will come in. Which means some people will never open the door. You know in Proverbs he said that wisdom stands at the high roads. Wisdom is there to whom it may concern. But many people never ask. Many people never ask. If you're going to remember this message, remember that Brother Wale say, don't do anything without asking. That is what proves your humility to the Lord. I am saying to you, I don't know how to do anything good. So what? Was my worst subject. See for more than my worst subject. Omi kori mi, enyaro kori mi kwe. Shugun ba tati furi pipe shi okolo ponka tati takiti. La ane kasuri yekwe uri asho kwe. After making so many mistakes in life, I know that there's nothing good in human brains. We can only see the beginning. We can only assess the beginning. And the beginning may seem good. And the Bible says there's a way that seems right. All of your acumen, all of your intelligence, all of your experiences can only assess the beginning. And when you get to the beginning and then you bring out your calculator because T is minus A, and you, can, you are only calculating the beginning. Not all roads run straight. Yes, the good beginning can, can cough off into negativity. You do not have the area view of your destiny. God does. Yes, and while you are calculating and you are calculating, I can tell you stories. My brother can... Peter Masoro, 
O di sister Mary ti moment to tin toast to. E mo ton calculate. Iye ton gba lowo osu ni o. Ba tu ti wele. They talk, 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 talk. You calculate. And how much are you earning? Earn 25,000. You It's not about you. He goes on. He doesn't know that we know what he's doing. He's going around our sisters. He's going around our sisters. Calculating. He wants to marry. Now the person is sweet now. I'm laughing already. <laughs> I'm laughing. Because I know the end. If that relationship starts, it has no end. But does she have the kind of money he wants? Yes! And he's going there now. And I'm watching. I'm saying, may you not be a fool. May you ask. Because if he ask, I'm old enough to say, don't go there. I can't believe it. We can warn. Calculate, Yes. But after you doing your calculation, please go to God and say, Dear Father, the beginning looks good. You have not seen. What did I say? This beginning looks good, dear Lord. Northern, southern, western, eastern. It looks fine. But Lord, I'm not going to take a step from here. Unless you say yes. Say that with me. Lord, I'm not going to take a step from here. Unless you do what? Unless you say yes. Because I know. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. It's only Jehovah who can see the end from the beginning. This one will make you laugh. When I met my wife, she was working at Amu Farm Sanders. Tell me that your son has these trousers. Oh man, where wash or consoke, ye man debi. but he born again. Times 20. In my life, I've preached a message before. I'm sorry for that message. I said there's nothing on earth that can make a man laugh. That his focus must always be in heaven. One of my early messages. Souls are dying. May laughter not be lacking in your life. Oh, open your mouth and laugh. I holy laugh unto the Lord. Because he has come to make us glad. Are you there with me? So when the Lord said I should marry her, Mowo, Emi, Otun Kwete. Yao mi okin kwete ba on yeshe man kung ba yon. O ma kung. Why would the Lord disgrace me by asking me to marry her? The Lord knows the end from the beginning. On our 23rd birthday, no, 22nd birthday, we were not married then. I, came, I think I came from England. And I took her to uh, a supermarket and I said she should buy anything so by then I've accepted my wife uses lipstick so I went to the lipstick place and I took the color I know she uses and when I took it to her will write lipstick for me I said yes have you not noticed I stopped using it I want to buy the Lord said to me, never call cost what I've blessed. Because he sees the end from the beginning. I can say it because she's not here. She prays more than I do. She fasts more than I do. She's more spiritual than I am. When I need counsel, I'd rather go to my wife than come to myself. That's the truth. What I can see now, and I do appreciate, God saw. When I was thinking, I was looking at a Kana Christian. Shall we stand up and pray to God? Only one song I want you to sing. You are blessed. My brother, 
May the Lord bless you. Afikuni. By the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are what? You are blessed. May you receive. Listen to me. All that is death has purchased for you. May you receive it. All that is love has purchased for you. May you receive it. Everything he labored for, the proceed of his sacrifice, may they be your portion. Oh Lord. You know that song? I receive your love. Hey, glory. I receive your love. We're going to move back. I'm going to call you. Two lights. Oh, Lord. I see your love. I see your love. I see your love. Second one. Oh, Lord. I see your love. I will teach you again. One goes up, one comes down. Oh, I receive your love. Oh Lord, I receive your love. Sebo mama wonye obele. This is very old.
Jesus said. He said, I will lead the blind on a path he does not know. He said, darkness before him will be light. And crooked things shall be made straight. He said, all these things I will do to him. And I will never forsake him. Say, oh Lord, I receive your love. Oh Lord, I receive your love. from where you are and he will plant you on the path of destiny Amen. oh i'm asking dear father that you will replant some today on the very path of their destiny we receive your plan for us we receive your purpose for us we receive your provision for us dear father Amen. come lord come satisfy yourself come dear father come bring to fulfillment that which was in your heart from the beginning hallelujah dear father sing it two times Oh Lord. oh Lord, I receive, I receive your love. Thursday come to the waters and let him drink that you may be refreshed. Drink from the cistern that never runs dry, from the well of the water of life. I speak life to every weary soul here this morning. That the freshness that water brings will come upon every weary soul in this room this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That strength will be restored. That hope will come alive again. Oh, that the weary would find solace in the word of life. The word that enlivens, the word that strengthens, the word that revives. That life will come again to every weary soul. That every confusion will dissipate. That every gray area will clear away. That there will be clarity. Clarity of purpose. Clarity of direction. For the water of life will refresh. Mighty Father, we thank you. We appreciate you for your word is here and name. 
Thank you for your word is a life. Thank you because we are in living by your word. We honor your name, Lord. For your word you've sent to us today again. That has caused hope to rise again in us. That has caused our cells and fibers in us to receive life again. That has given us strength again to move on. That those who have parked at some bus stops and junctions in their lives resigned to faith, they have a reason to move on again. And press on towards the expected end, which you, O oh Lord, know. We give all the praise to you. Our heart long for you, dear Father. Help us to be rightly positioned before you. That we will not trust in our own understanding. We will not trust in our own ways. But we will absolutely trust in you. That we will not do our will. But only yours we will do. That you will help us to align our will with yours. And enable our heart to follow through with your will. However unclear it might seem to us at the beginning. However unattractive it might seem to us at the beginning. Enable our heart to follow through with your will and your will alone. We give you praise Lord we honor you. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. We ask that you return to your son in strength and in virtue. And Lord, that you create in him more room to continue. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.